Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Welcome in, Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series as we continue through the week. I am sitting here with Mike D'Ambrosio. Good to have you here, Mike. Good to be on. We are uh, on part two of our series Mike and I did. Uh, we're doing yesterday. Um, we did the first one, part one, if you will, biggest threats to the biggest threats facing real estate. We're going to do part two today. That's what you're going to listen to. Before we get started on that, just a reminder, if you need anything in the area of real estate, you need uh, someone, an expert on uh, helping you buy or helping you list your home. It is a really crazy market to navigate, and you need to make sure you have a pro to help you. Mike's here to do that. You could reach him a couple different ways. You could email Mike at reradiolive.com, or you could always text or call him, area code 408-630-0101. And for more information, actually, of all the services Mike offers, you go to Mike D. Sells. That's Mike D. as in David, S-E-L-L-S dot com. If uh, I can help you in the side of uh, financing, if you're getting ready to finance a purchase, or maybe you're even more importantly, you need to get approved and you need to know how much you could afford, uh, I would important. recommend that you do that before you start looking, because otherwise you could be in for a surprise. You could contact me, Joe, at RE Radio Live or 408 838 9060. All right, so a couple different things we're going to jump into today. Again, uh, part two, biggest, the biggest threats facing real estate. Yesterday, Mike and I ran through, talked mostly about some of the technologies and what's technology, how it's going to change. Uh, be sure to go tune in, take a look at that if you, or listen to it, I should say, if you haven't. Today, we're going to touch, touch on a little bit, maybe some of the political, what, what's happening, what could affect it politically some of the global uncertainty, and we'll chat a little bit about the uh, maybe the infrastructure on the investment as well. Um, what do you think, Mike, on the political side as as we as it relates to the threats on facing real estate? Yeah, and I'm not going to make this a, a Democrat versus Republican conversation. Yeah, so let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> we're not a political podcast, <laughs> uh, but but basically, I mean, the, there's a lot of uncertainty out there due yeah. to, to trade, travel, yep. immigration policies. Which affects cross border mm-hmm. investors and and um, and retail and I mean you know as especially with the immigration policies right. and stuff it does I mean we and this is this has been going on for a long time not even before Trump who obviously is the immigration things a mm-hmm. big part of his campaigning but even before that I mean especially with Asian and we have a lot of Asian investors especially where we live and there's different policies and different mm-hmm. things that can change and affect real estate and so as as those tighten up or 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 get a little easier it just depends on how it's going to affect real estate but mm-hmm. i think as maybe our borders tighten and it's going to affect residential real estate yeah. because they are investing in that um so i think the immigration thing is something not to take lightly um when it comes to uh real estate so we'll see we'll see where that goes yeah no, i think it'll be interesting and i do agree you know on the financing side we get a lot of people with different visas you know, and there's, you know, there's in some, some cases you can't get traditional financing depending on your citizen status or, yeah. you know, lack of it. You know, trade lines, your credit, do you have credit in the United States? There's all kinds of stuff. So as Mike mentioned, you know, this could have an effect on, you know, the amount of people that are able to get in, get jobs. And, you know, let's face it here, what we see in Silicon Valley, a lot of these people that are awaiting citizenship uh, requirements um, they certainly have the income in many cases to buy. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. They have the income already, or when they're working high tech, they even have some of the down payments. I see that. So I do think that there is going to be, it'll be interesting to see how this shapes out and what that means to the real estate market. Now, in general, you have the other side of this, Mike, you have just growth. And what I mean by growth is, you know, if you just look at, at, at the need 
of housing. And I know that that varies between states, counties, areas, yeah. all that kind of stuff, right? But if you just look at general growth, I forget what the number is. I mean, if if just the people that we're going to add, yeah, no, that's to a good the general one. population is going to be quite a bit in the next five to ten years as well. It's a great point, and and one of the other main points we should be talking about growth is huge, especially. I mean, even taking our area, for example, with all the jobs we have mm-hmm. here and the growth that we're going to see and, and what strain that's going to have not only on uh, the housing, mm-hmm. you know, it's going to have strain on housing, affordable housing, the need right. for affordable housing, traffic, infrastructure, all of that. Mm-hmm. And so taking that little s- snapshot of just where we live, that's going to happen across the country with a you know growing population, uh, an aging population, too, that are living longer. Mm-hmm. Um so, yeah, I think growth is a big part of things that threaten real estate in the future, mm-hmm. especially if we can't build more housing because the yeah. housing starts are not very – they're not enough. Mm-hmm. It's not enough. We need more, um, and that's the bottom line, you know. Well, in the second part, we'll talk more about the infrastructure, but let, let, let's kind of finish up this one talk a little. The other piece of this, it is political, is the interest rates. Yeah. Someone might say, well, why is interest rates political as well? Because depending on who we have in office, depending on what's going on with the jobs, depending on what's going on with fear of investments, depending on what's going on with a potential war, depending, I'm not suggesting that's going to happen, but you know what I mean. That is political. Yeah. And absolutely. all those things could affect, guess what, the interest rate, which, guess what, that could affect that's, the buying power. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't realize how the interest rates are yeah. formulated. And it's, you know, it's politically based, Mm -hmm. basically. It is. It comes down to it. So, yeah, absolutely. And we talk about interest rates that have risen twice. Mm -hmm. Well, talk about that for a second on a side note. The basis has risen. They've, they've, They've raised that, but how has it affected rates, really? Yeah, this is a great, always a great topic. And I'll real quickly just tell, a lot of times people will hear the Fed is raising interest rates and you'll get calls and I'll get calls and people will email and go, God, you know, I, I feel like I missed out or maybe I should lock in my loan because I hear rates are going up. And it has, you know, so when the Fed raises the prime, it has nothing, absolutely nothing. It's not tied to it. Absolutely has nothing to do with the 30-year mortgage or mortgage-backed securities. What it does do is it has a rippling effect at times, Mike, in that conventional wisdom is that when the Fed raises, that means the economy is doing better, right, adding jobs, yeah. outlook looks good, all those things. So, Typically, the after effect, if you will, the ripple effect might be the 30-year rates and the mortgage rates might go up because of some of the same reason. But yeah. the prime is not tied to those directly. And But politically, it'll be interesting to see. Matter of fact, you know, here, here's what's interesting. They've raised the prime twice now, I think, in the last four or five months or something, six yeah. months. And as I looked at rates today... The 30-year money really is true. now down, yeah. actually but it down a little bit lower than it was two months ago. Yeah, right. 30 it's years. Amazing. The last thing I'll say about that, which is, again, kind of an eye-opener to me, and I'm in this business. I look at it every day. 30-year jumbo money now is less less than 4%, and it's cheaper than conforming money. Wow. Isn't that funny? Yeah. A month or two ago, it was a quarter to three-eighths higher for yeah, jumbo money. Yeah, crazy. It doesn't yeah. make sense. Anyway, yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, so, okay, so then the rates, it obviously affects, politically yep. that affects that. So let's, before we go on our break, let's just mm-hmm. touch on infrastructure and we can finish okay. up. But, you know, infrastructure is huge, and we talked about this. This is kind of a direct correlation with what we talked about in part one of the podcast is uh, is the movement of goods. I mean, so there's a lot of needs that we have for infrastructure, we're talking roads, bridges, <coughs> tunnels, ports, airports. Now with the movement of goods and everything that's involved in the Amazons of the world mm-hmm. and, and moving those products from ports to warehouses, airports, roads, highways, and we all know that a lot of our infrastructure is already aging mm-hmm. um, and is, in, is, is needs work. So infrastructure and getting the, the money for the infrastructure right. could be a big threat to real estate going forward because... Without all of that movement and all those things fixed up, and it, it does affect the value of real estate. So, Yeah, no, it really does. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we are going to continue the conversation. Mike and I are talking about the biggest threats facing real estate. Talked a little bit about the political, you know, what really could happen politically and globally to, 
to some of the changes. And we come back, we're going to dive in deeper, a little bit more into infrastructure. This is Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series. We'll be back with you to continue in just a minute. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Hi, this is Joe Kuchera of Real Estate Radio Live. Thanks for tuning into our podcast. We are your go-to resource for all aspects of real estate, including buying, selling, refinancing, building, and legal and tax advice, and much more. You can subscribe to Real Estate Radio Live podcast on iTunes and Stitcher to listen to an engaging discussion about anything and everything real estate. So make sure you get our app, RE Radio Live, in the iTunes store to follow the show. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's topic or guests, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series, sitting alongside Mike D'Ambrosio. We are... Talking today about, uh, this is part two, the biggest threats facing real estate. Yesterday we did part one. Today we dove into part two. A lot of a lot of data and information here. We could probably do a part three, part four. Um, there's just so much and continue on. Matter of fact. Um, a lot of threats to real estate, Joe. I could be out of a job in a year. Yeah. <laughs> we, both, we, both might be, <laughs> we both might be working for Whole Foods. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Robots. Yeah. Uh, you know, actually, as I think about this, Mike, we should think about uh, doing, um, I don't know, may, maybe once a month, you know, kind of an update on on this type of stuff specifically just because there's so much changing so quickly. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, let's finish up on some of the infrastructure, and then I know we want to touch on some of the aging population and, yeah. you know, some of the trends and then uh, some student loans as well before we wrap up. Yeah, no, I think infrastructure, we, we talked a lot about that on the previous segment, but it really kind of transitions nicely. When we talk about infrastructure, uh, let's talk about the aging population mm-hmm. as well because it kind of goes hand in hand, especially with the baby boomer generation. They're entering their retirement years. Right. They're They're going to need different types of infrastructure as far as, you know, multifamily housing and, and senior living and health care so we don't have enough for any of that, mm-hmm. especially around where we live. We don't have enough senior living. We don't have enough health care. Um, we need to be able to meet the, the needs of this large demographic that's really going to be he- heading into these these years. Mm-hmm. So from that standpoint, in, as far as infrastructure and an aging population goes, we have a lot of threats there because we need we frankly, we need to have more for the for the baby boomers. So mm-hmm. that, that's a big deal. I think. Yeah. No, it really is. We uh the aging population, we've done several shows. The number that the number that is out there and it's and it's, you know, again for anybody to research and look at. I want to say it's is it 10,000 a day? It's a big number. Yeah, I think it's about right, that. Right, that are retiring. Yeah. 10,000 a day. It's a lot. And it may not sound like a a lot, but it is a lot. And so when you put the, you take that number, so you start talking about, you know, the hundreds of thousands, the millions of people that are retiring over a year period or less in certain areas, um, what what happens? How does that affect real estate? I mean, they're moving out of houses typically. They're either moving into assisted care or maybe moving in with, you know, their children. Yeah. Or maybe moving out of the area because yeah. they can't afford it anymore. Right. Um, There's a lot of different ways it affects real estate, as you just mentioned. Right. And uh, who knows? Maybe, maybe with all these people uh, retiring, there'll be uh, more golfers out there too. Because I know <laughs> golf, the golf industry is hurting. It We're is. not a golf podcast, but it is hurting. So maybe yeah. they'll they'll pick back up with the boomers retiring and having more time on their hands. But but no, I think the aging and, and then not to get too down in the weeds on the aging population, but I mean even in our area, they're stuck in their homes because they're mm-hmm. locked into low taxes and 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 they don't want to move and and so. It's just there's a lot of different things with the aging population that could affect the real estate market. Mm-hmm. So no, I would I would agree, and that's you made a good point on just now. There's a lot of people that are I won't call it paralyzed, but potentially they don't know what to do, um, and they're concerned and probably scared, quite frankly, because 
They've been in their home for 35, 40 years. In some cases, they own it free and clear. Mm -hmm. It's worth a couple million. It sounds exciting to some people. How lucky are you? But not really because, you know, they they may have very little Social Security, very little Mm -hmm. pension, if none. And if they move from there, that sounds great to sell the place. But then what do you do? Yeah. First of all, you're going to get hammered big time with taxes, right? right? And then whatever you have the money with, where do you go buy? And, you know... What's There's your more life? of that money out, out the door, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so your little nest egg is all of a sudden it's gone. You yeah, know? so that's a that's a big deal. Aging population is definitely yeah. you know definitely a big deal. Let's let's talk a little bit about uh, trends before we we are going to finish up a little bit on student loans and how that affects it too. But you know we, we hear for years it was the baby boomers, now it's the millennials, and I forget I don't even know I'm losing track. What's the younger group after? Oh, under, God. What I is just it? talked about this. It's not Gen X or no, something. No, it's is Y. It? Is Gen it y, y or Z? I think it's Y. Okay. Because millennials are also known as X Gen X. Okay, I think. that's true. Yeah. So we'll get these things straight. Who the hell cares, <laughs> Joe? <laughs> They're going to be screwed up anyways. Let's just say that. Well, we re- we represent two here, so yeah. we're <laughs> the baby boomers and the uh, the millennials. So the kind of question is, I want to I want to ask you a little bit and talk about is there's a shortage of housing. Obviously, we talk about the you know the low inventory. We talk about the demand versus supply and what drives the market and why house prices keep going up. And the question becomes. You know, will, will it ever change? I know some, it's easy to say, oh, my gosh, this, you know, you look at all the indicators. Several years ago, we had the, more, we had the dot-com meltdown. That's what caused a, a huge adjustment in the market. Then we had the mortgage meltdown. So the question is, you and I have talked, is there anything that's coming that could potentially make this market or markets throughout the United States, you know, pause or take a significant dip in value or make adjustments? Uh, I don't know that anybody knows that. It would be anybody's guess. But can you see a time, specifically maybe in this area, Mike, where the demand is not such the way it is now? Or do you think it's going to continue because of the reasons we've discussed? Yeah, I think the only thing, as we've talked about before, is maybe the millennial or the younger generations <coughs> considering home ownership not important anymore. And I, I think a lot of them still do, but they have... You know, then this talks about student debt, but I think uh, millennials not thinking home ownership is the main their main mm-hmm. goal might right. be a, might might affect real estate in the future. I don't know. Maybe that mindset changes as they get older and maybe pay down some student debt, but that could definitely affect real estate. I think that's the one of the biggest threats to real it estate is. as far as home ownership outside of like a catastrophic world event that could wipe out you know real estate or whatever, but or wipe out a city or something mm-hmm. like that or the, or affect the the financial markets but i think the whole millennial conversation you know we talk about it a lot in the show uh and i think that's the biggest probably the biggest thing is their thought on home ownership well um i could tell you in doing financing i get i'll bet you i, sh- I should keep a better track of this but i would bet that 3 3 out of 10 transactions maybe 4 out of 10 transactions when you pull credit, they have student debt. Yeah, some type of student loans, and some of it's small, could be ten, fifteen grand. Some of it's two hundred plus thousand. <laughs> yeah, that, and that's talk about paralyzing. That could paralyze you for. You can't get a long rid of that. Yeah. What I mean by that is, you you can't file bankruptcy to get rid of it. You can't, yeah. you know. So sorry, I can't pay. There's there's no. <laughs> getting rid of that. Yeah, that sticks with you. Yeah, it does. So there's there's, as Mike mentioned, that's going to be an issue that is really going to affect the the real estate market. And so when we talk about threats, this is definitely a threat. Someone might say, well, yeah, but, you know, there's still enough people that buy homes and, the, you know, there's still enough again, people are going to be interested. However, we haven't seen, you know, there's still, what my point is, is you look at the data, Mike, there's big waves of young kids that are graduating that are going to be burdened with student debt. So, yeah. for instance, I guess my point is, what we see now is bad enough. I don't know that it's getting any better. If, if no. five years from now, if we're having the same conversation, I can't see it getting better. No, I don't see it getting better at all. And then what are they doing when they graduate this debt? They're moving back in with mom and dad, <laughs> who then aren't moving either. Mm-hmm. So then that house isn't selling to some new family. And then you got multi generations living there, and you got that damn millennial down in the basement <laughs> rolling doobies and playing video games. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But. So, you know, so I think between all that, (laughs) yeah. so with all that, you know, it's going to affect who the purchasers are in the future. Mm -hmm. 
and the buyers. And so that's going to be an interesting thing to, to watch out for. Yeah, no, it really is. All right, we're going to wrap things up, and uh, I hope we covered enough. We had. Uh, if again, you don't feel great about real estate after these two podcasts, right. then I don't know what you feel. <laughs> I think we beat everybody down pretty well, <laughs> yeah, right? We don't did. you think? We did. But if you're in the market to buy a house, <laughs> Mike is here. If you're in the market to sell a house, Mike is That's here. That's right. And financing. It's easy. Before we close out, I'll just say the last thing I'll say is it's easy to always paint this picture and give everybody positive news, and we do that. We give you guys updates and what's important, but it's also very, very important in our business to to speak honest and, you know, really, Mike, provide people with, with information yep. that's real. Absolutely. You, you know, you can't, you can't, especially now, there's no covering this stuff up. Yeah, it's you, out there, right? You can't pull the wool over your eyes. you got to look no. at everything and uh, take everything into account. So. All right. We're going to have to sign off. Thanks again for tuning in. Be sure, again, to give us any reviews. For more information, you can go to reradiolive.com. Mike, thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Good times. Until next time, take care. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com.